Like every hero, he had obstacles to overcome. And they said, there's no way this will sell. But the rewards were great. If they didn't have Mega Man, I don't even know how they'd be surviving today, honestly. Learn the secrets behind his power. It's about one thing. And it's always about one thing. Blasting. It's a huge cast of characters that any kid can enjoy. Everybody loves Mega Man. And meet Inafune, the man behind the Mega. I had no idea my luck would go this well. This character would be this great and last this long. So yes, it was a huge surprise for me. In 1984, a Japanese video game company named Capcom hits its stride in the arcade scene with popular hits including 1942 and Gunsmoke. Their success allows them to expand, and a young artist named Keiji Inafune is hired. I've always liked drawing pictures. From a long time ago, I've always wanted to be an illustrator. Just about at the time that I had graduated, video gaming companies were becoming very popular and they had always wanted young, talented artists. And it was a good chance for me to break out, get into a company and prove myself. So it just happened to be the right timing for me to be an illustrator. Inafune goes to work on Capcom's newest arcade game. The very, very first project I ever did was an arcade game called The Street Fighter. Then after that, when we were doing the project, they said, we're working on a new title for the home consumer division, and we'd like you to participate in that. So, uh, it was at that time I joined the Mega Man project. And the hunt for the hero turns personal. A lot of the uh, character design for Mega Man is based upon some of the Japanese cartoons that I saw when I was a child. And when I was making this game, it was kind of like a going back to my roots, going back to my childhood when I designed it. It was very fun to design that character. And that character needs a name. Before it was Rockman, it was originally going to be Mighty Kid or Knuckle Kid. And this is how we were doing the package. So we decided on Rockman. And in the end, it did become the state's Mega Man. Actually, it's not a rock like a stone or a pebble. That was not where the name Rockman comes from. It comes from rock and roll. There's also another character named Roll. When I first designed the character, I had rock and roll in mind. That was the back image I was going off of when I designed a lot of the artwork. For me, Rock Man, or Mega Man, has always been a game that's been designed with music in mind. Music's always been a very important part of the series. And just like Mega Man, even his creators show weakness. This is Mega Man 1, all the original bosses that I drew with my own two hands. <laughs> when I look at it now, I think, man, I really wasn't that good, was I? If one of my character designers that work underneath me now were to bring something like this to me, I'd probably take one look and say, no way, this sucks, try again. <laughs> With the characters and story in place, it's time to rock and roll. Basically, when you think about it, there's not something in the world that is just stronger than everybody else. Almost everything has something it's stronger than and something that it's weaker to. Sort of like in scissors, rock, and paper. Scissors will beat paper, but it loses to the rock. Paper will beat the rock, but it loses to the scissors. So that's how the Mega Man weapons work. And now it's time to introduce the twist. Well, the whole idea behind Mega Man was you defeat one boss. And then you go to the next boss by using the weapon you just gained. They also give players a new kind of freedom. The original Mega Man game was interesting because it was one of the first games that allowed you to choose what level you played first. It was a linear platform game like a lot of other platform games, but you had a lot of freedom up front to choose the path that you wanted to take through the game. With Mega Man, they were giving the player something to, to look forward to, an element of strategy, which most games back then really didn't have. Once the game is finished, Inafune has to face his own bosses. After we got the game done, we took it over to sales. 
And we said, look, we got the game done. This is what it's like. And they said, there's no way this will sell. So I was really disappointed, of course. I was like, well, I tried my best, my hardest. Really, really worked hard at it. And it didn't work out. Capcom decides to release the game in Japan in a limited amount. Surprising everyone, the game catches on in Japan. Capcom decides to bring the little robot to America. Before they cross cultures, they make a few changes. And like they say, it's what's on the inside that really counts. It had some of the worst box art in the history of video games. It doesn't look anything near the uh, Mega Man that we see today. The box art for the first Mega Man game in the U.S. was done very quickly. The president of Capcom U.S. said to his marketing guy, you know, we need a cover done tomorrow. And he went out and got a friend of his to do it in like six hours. And that's the reason why it turned out so bad. They had some 45-year-old guy with a strange-looking weapon. Despite the cover, word begins to spread. And sales of Mega Man begin to gain momentum. The first Mega Man was indeed a sleeper hit. Word of mouth really caught on with the Mega Man. The Mega Man team begins to work on the sequel, but this time with a little extra help. This was an illustration used in a poster which said, we are waiting for everyone's ideas for new enemies. There was a contest in Nintendo Power where kids could create robot monsters for the game. From 2, we had children participating in the R&D of the game. So you really have a game kind of created by children for children. You have that child touch, actually. When the sequel arrives in America in 1989, there's already a captive audience ready to face the evil Dr. Wily. If I were to have to throw out one single Mega Man title that I really liked, I guess it would be Mega Man 2. It was probably the one game where I really, really felt that I had put in 100% of everything that I was aiming for. Out of all the games I've made, one of the best ones. I really liked it. Capcom, realizing the potential of the game, throws their weight behind the series. When we made the first Mega Man, you're always limited by memory, how much space you have on the cartridges. And we had tons of characters that we had created that we all wanted to fit in the first game that we couldn't. So all the characters that were left over, we decided to put in number two. A lot of the characters became a lot more bright and colorful. The sprites were a lot prettier in the second one. We were able to do a lot of things that uh, we couldn't do in the first one. The game is popular, selling more copies than the original and ensuring that the Blue Bomber will return. Mega Man and Street Fighter came out around the same time, are responsible for, you know, Capcom. They branded Capcom, they made them a company to be reckoned with. People didn't really know Capcom as a brand until, you know, Mega Man came shooting in. With the success of two Mega Man games, Capcom rushes to release number three. When Mega Man 1 and 2 and 3 hit it, it was huge. I mean, they kept coming out in progression. Like, it was, you know, one after the other after the other. They, they kept coming in and waste any time. They might not have known they had a hit on their hands, but once they did, it was immediate. Mega Man is on a roll. But Capcom's next move will be a frustrating one. In 1991, Nintendo releases the Super Nintendo, an updated version of their aging console system. But one character is nowhere to be seen. I think they continued to do Mega Man games for the NES because, uh, first of all, it was easy to do. It was inexpensive for them to develop additional Mega Man games. All six of the Mega Man games for the NES use the same character animation. They have different music, different backgrounds, different enemies, different things to do, but it's basically the same engine. They got it right the first time and they just continued to do it. They didn't want to mess with the formula. Capcom's famous for not messing with a good thing and at the time Mega Man 2 had done outrageous numbers and 3 did fairly well and they figured you know why mess with a good thing. Yeah like maybe the decision seems a little weird now but at the time you know the installed base in the Nintendo was was outrageous it was huge. So why wouldn't you want to release a new Nintendo game with, you know, your all-star Mega Man? Mega Man 4 blasts its way onto shelves in 1991. However, many people are beginning to move on to the newer system, leaving the Blue Bomber with a shrinking fan base. Mega Man 5 is released in 1992. And Mega Man 6 hits the shelves a year later with little fanfare. The future looks bleak for the little robot. 
but in true video game style, he's about to get another life. By 1994, Capcom has quite a bit of experience making games for the Super Nintendo. They know that they will have to do more than just re-release older games on the new system. Mega Man needs a makeover. I, I guess with every system you have to have some sort of major evolution because graphically you can do so much more. And uh, the cool thing about Mega Man is he didn't go into 3D because you couldn't really quite yet. So, so instead of what Capcom did was just give him a makeover and make him Mega Man X. Using elements of the original series, Capcom's designer 